The skeleton is the framework of the body. Without it, the body would be without form and it wouldn't even be possible to walk upright. Among its many functions, the skeleton serves to protect vital organs such as the brain, the heart, and the lungs. One field of study that bones are very important to is forensic anthropology. But before we can become forensic anthropologists like we see on TV, we need to learn all about the skeleton. We'll provide a complete, in-depth study of the skeletal system in other CTE videos, but for now, we'll just be doing a brief overview of the skeletal system as a whole. The skeleton is divided into two major sections, the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton. The first section we'll cover is the axial skeleton. This forms the main trunk of the body and consists of the skull, spinal column, ribs, and sternum. The sternum is the breastbone, and the skull is composed of eight different bones. The spinal column is also known as the vertebral. There are 26 vertebrae in the spinal column and an intervertebral disc between each. The vertebral, or spinal column's function, is to protect the spinal cord. The main function of the invertebral disc is to act as a shock absorber between each vertebra. The costae, or ribs, are composed of 24 ribs, or 12 pairs of ribs. There are 7 pairs of true ribs and 5 pairs of false ribs, of which the last two pairs are called the floating ribs. The rib's main function is to protect vital organs such as the heart, major blood vessels, and the lungs. These bones are also responsible for the production or creation of blood. The medical term for this is hematopoiesis. The second major section of the skeletal system is called the appendicular skeleton. This section forms the extremities of the body, which are the shoulder girdle, arm bones, pelvic girdle, and the leg bones. The shoulder girdle is comprised of four bones. It's made up of two clavicles, known as the collar bones, and two scapulas, which are known as the shoulder bones. Together these bones form the shoulder girdle to which the arm bones attach to. The arm is composed of three bones. The upper bone is known as the humerus. This is categorized as a long bone. The lower bones, of which there are two, are called the radius and the ulna. Attached to the radius and ulna are the wrist bones, otherwise known as the eight carpals. Attached to the eight carpals are the hand bones, and the hand bones are comprised of five metacarpals, which form the palm of the hand and the 14 phalanges, which form the fingers, including the thumbs. The pelvic girdle is the structure to which the leg bones are attached. The pelvic girdle is made up of two oscoxi, or hip bones. Each hip bone is divided into three sections, the ilium, the ischium, and the symphysis, or pubis. The leg bones are attached to the pelvic sockets, called the acetabulums. Each leg consists of one femur, or thigh bone. It is in the upper leg and is also categorized as a long bone. Between the upper and lower leg is the patella, or kneecap. And the lower leg is composed of the tibia and fibula. The tibia is known as the shin bone and the fibula runs parallel to it. Attached to the lower leg are the seven tarsals known as the ankle bones. Attached to the ankle bones are the five metatarsals. And attached to these bones are the 14 phalanges, which are the toes. And last but not least of the leg bones is the heel of the foot. This is known as the calcaneus. 
Long bones are hard, dense bones that provide strength, structure, and mobility. An example is the femur or thigh bone. Here's the anatomical makeup of a long bone. A long bone has a shaft and two ends. The shaft is known as the diaphysis, and the two ends are called the proximal epiphysis and the distal epiphysis. The medullary canal is a cavity in the diaphysis, which is filled with yellow marrow. The endosteum is a membrane that lines the medullary canal and keeps the yellow marrow intact. The outside of the bone is covered with a tough membrane called the periosteum. Joints are formed where two or more bones are joined together. The joints are divided into three major categories defined as to how these joints move. Diarthrosis or synovial means freely movable. An example would be the arm socket or the ball and socket of shoulder and hips. Amphiarthrosis is slightly movable. An example of this would be the vertebrae. And synarthrosis is immovable. An example of an immovable joint would be the sutures or joints of the cranium. Ligaments and cartilage are important supportive structures for the joint. Thanks for watching our overview of the skeletal system. For a more in-depth and detailed study and videos concerning common diseases and conditions of the bones and joints, check out our video library at cteskills.com.